Hello everybody, it's really good that you're able to join us again and I genuinely hope that you're keeping well and that your families are well. We're praying for you all, praying that God will help you all uh, through this difficult time. Remember last week it was the sixth commandment, thou shalt not kill and we learned that God is not only concerned about our outward actions but also of course about our thoughts and about how we treat others and this week it's the seventh commandment which is thou shalt not commit adultery i'm going to show you something first this week i wonder do you know what it is of course there you go it's a wedding ring and nearly 23 years ago louise gave me this at our wedding to put on and i give her one of course as well and we made from some very special promises wedding vows and and this is what i said to her that day i take you louise to be my wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health to love and to cherish till death us to part according to god's holy law in the presence of god i make this vow you know, today's lesson is all about marriage. And we're going to read about a story in the Bible which tells us about marriage, teaches us about the importance of marriage. It's 2 Samuel chapter 11 and verse 1. And we'll just read the first five verses. And if you have your Bible, great. If you don't, just listen carefully. It's the story of David and Bathsheba. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah but David tarried still at Jerusalem and it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived, and sent, and told David, and said, I am with child. Now, the story of David and Bathsheba has much to teach us about marriage. Let me just remind you of this story. King David was at home in his fine palace when all his armies were away fighting. And one evening he got up from his bed and went for a walk upon the roof of his palace. And he saw a woman washing herself and the Bible says she was very beautiful to look upon. And David asked who this woman was and was told that her name is, was Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. At which point he should have backed off and left it, but of course we know that he didn't. And David sent for her and she was brought to the palace. And you probably know the story. Sadly, David had an affair with Bathsheba and before long she was expecting a baby. How did all this happen? Well, I think, firstly, David should have been away fighting with his soldiers. Isn't that right? He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And here he was at home with nothing to do. And the devil always finds plenty for idle hands to do. And if you want to stay away from temptation, then it's important that you stay out of those places uh, and those situations that will make it really difficult for you. So he saw Bathsheba and he was tempted and he should have walked away. We know he didn't. When you're tempted, the easiest time to walk away is at the beginning. It's not right. If you're sliding down a hill, the easiest time to stop is near the top. It's not halfway down or three quarters of the way down. And it's not wrong to be tempted. Remember that. We, someone said to me one time, you can't stop the birds flying over your head, but you can stop them nesting on your head. In other words, it's uh, not wrong to be tempted, but it's wrong when we dwell on these thoughts and these temptations and give in to them. Remember Joseph, 
Now, way back near the start of the Bible, whenever he was tempted by Potiphar's wife in Egypt, what did he do? He ran away from the temptation. David should have run away, but he didn't. He delayed, and David's delay had terrible consequences. So he tried to cover up his sin. He sent for Uriah, her husband, and asked for him to be sent home from the battle. And when he came back, David talked to him about how the battle was going. He pretended, of course, that he was interested, but he wasn't really. He told Uriah to go home to Bathsheba that night. And this was all part of his big plan that he was trying to set it up so that people would believe Bathsheba's baby belonged to Uriah. But it failed because Uriah didn't go home. These were told in the Bible he slept at the door of the king's house with all the king's servants. And next morning David heard about this and he said to Uriah, why did you not go home last night? And Uriah said he didn't think it was right to go home and live in the lap of luxury at his house and have an easy life while all his armies and his soldiers were away fighting on the battlefield. So David tried another plan to get Uriah to go home. As you know, he invited him to the palace for a big feast and lots of food and drink and, and he got him really drunk and then he hoped that he would go home to Bathsheba. But of course he didn't. And again, he slept with the king's servants. Finally, in desperation, David thought of one more plan to avoid being found out. And it was a terrible plan. He sent Uriah to the battlefield with a letter and the letter was to be given to Joab who was the leader of the battle and the letter said that Uriah was to be placed in that part of the battle which was the most dangerous and the Bible says the hottest part of the battle where he was more likely to be killed and of course you know the story sadly David's wishes came true and poor Uriah was killed along with many other brave soldiers and word reached Bathsheba at home and she was very sad. The Bible tells us she mourned for her husband. You see, the more David tried to cover his sin, the more complicated and messier it got. One sin always leads to another. The devil is a hard taskmaster and he won't let up easily. David's first sin was lust as in he looked at Bathsheba. And then secondly, it was adultery, the act. And then thirdly, it was lies. He had to tell lots of lies to cover up what he was doing. And then fourthly, tragically, it was murder when Uriah had to be killed. And you know, if David had confessed his sin and repented at the start, God would have forgiven him and it would have been so much better. But he didn't do that. It's always better to repent and turn back to God early and to confess our sins. Well, after a while, David sent for Bathsheba and she became his wife and lived in the palace. And shortly afterwards, their son was born. David thought he'd got away with it. Nobody, had, nobody else knew about it. It hadn't been seen, but you know what? He had left God out of the equation. God, who sees everything, had seen it. And men and women live sinful lives down here, and maybe they think that, you know, nobody has seen it. But the God who sees everything has seen it. And, you know, uh, God had seen what David had done as well. Well, a full year passed, and one day a man called Nathan arrived in the palace to speak to the king. And he told the, the king, David, a story about two men who lived in the city. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man had many flocks of sheep and the poor man had just one wee pet lamb which he and his family loved. Well, the rich man had a visitor and wanted to make a big feast. And instead of taking one of his many lambs he went to the poor man's house and he got his only lamb and he killed it and dressed it for the visitor and the special feast and David heard this story and he was so cross he said the man who has done that will have to die and immediately Nathan pointed the finger right at David and said David 
King David, you are that man. God anointed you to be king over Israel. God gave you a beautiful palace. God delivered you from King Saul. You could have had any wife at all from many possible wives. And yet that wasn't enough. Because you took uh, Uriah's wife, his one only precious wife, for your own. And God was cross. And Nathan said that David was going to be punished. You know, young people, movies and TV programs will try to convince you that God's commandments are out of date, but they're not. You'll be told that there's no harm in a boy and a girl, and two young people living together before they get married, but you're better to obey God's word. And as you grow older and start to date, you'll find that, you know, um, if you're a Christian, that God will guide you to the person for your life, to, for, to the right partner for yourself. But it's very important that right from the beginning that you decide that you're going to stay with this person. As the wedding vows say, till death us do part. Maybe, young Christian, you've also been looking at things on the internet. You said, you're saying to me, you know, I have had such temptation recently. Maybe you've been looking at things you shouldn't be looking at. And you want to stop it and you want to break free from it. God can help you to do that. If you really mean it, you're really sincere and you confess it and you repent it and you're determined to leave it behind, then God can break that a temptation, that control that it has over you in your life. You know, it might help to talk to somebody. Sometimes it helps to share the burden and someone else can help you through it as well. Well, we know that when we do this, that God will forgive us when we really mean it. God forgave David, even after all that he had done. David repented sincerely. You know, we're told in Psalm 51, a psalm that David wrote. David said, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And David had all his sins washed away, whiter than snow. But there was punishment. Uh, there was forgiveness, but there was still consequences. There was punishment. And David's family suffered for many generations because of what he had done. You know, young people, uh, the, the aim of today's lesson is just to remember that marriage is from God. It's God's way and God's way is always the best way. And it's the best way in the plan for your life too. We'll just pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the story today. We thank you, Lord, that uh, David sought forgiveness genuinely for what had happened and he found it. We thank you that you have mercy and grace in abundant measure. Lord, we just pray that you will help the young people as they grow up in this difficult world, Lord, where your commandments are not respected and not obeyed, that the young people in our Sunday school would realise that God's commandments are relevant for today, just as they were back in David's day. We pray, Lord, that you give our young people the strength to stand up for God, not to be moulded by this old world, but to let uh, the power of God mould them and transform their lives. Be with all our families this coming week. Keep us safe. Keep us trusting in you. Thank you for all you've done for us. Amen. Thank you so much and love to see you again next week. God bless.